Hey guys, Bolt Shitty here, here for DC Arrowverse. First of all, I have some drawing that I will be doing here soon. This is my first ever JoJo drawing. Um, of course, of my favorite JoJo, Jotro. Um, I will be doing those more on Instagram. So, of course, go to Bullet Shooter to see any other past and future content of drawing and stuff that I'll have. Or, you know, just stuff in general you want to look at that I have in normal life. Um, anyways, DC's Arrowverse. This is some of the most highest quality characters, but yet some of the most basic slash crappiest DC storytelling ever. So let's start with the main show, Arrow, which originally was supposed to be a, an, a Green Arrow show of the spinoff for Smallville's. Um, but then, of course, it turned into its own universe. And basically, since they can't get the holds of Batman, they turned Green Arrow into Batman. Sure, in the, like, if you look out, Justice League Unlimited's um, Green Arrow, he does have a lot of those personalities. The thing is, he doesn't worry about hitting that line of killing someone. He's more of a Flash. He wants to be a little bit of a jokester, He ha but he's more smarter about it. He's not a full-on Spider-Man or a Deadpool, but he's just... He has more smarter remarks, and he's more ego than anything. He's basically an egocentric Batman. That's what it is. And it's not even him... Like, of course they do hit that. Like, he's like, you failed the city, you did that and this. But the thing is, he doesn't break his back over everything he does like Batman. Batman is just like, I failed this city. I've, I, I, I only have the mission. Where... Arrow is more of, I do what I can to help people. Um, basically, he has the Robin Hood mentality. And love green this Green Arrow, but it isn't the, the, the basically guy who's egocentric and Robin Hood, who cares for his fellow man, and Elson the Flash, Barry Allen, or in Justice League's Unlimited, in Justice League, it's... Um, uh, oh crap, Wally, yeah, Wally West, um, he is known to be one of the hearts of the Justice League, um, and he's also like the, uh, he's the baseline, um, he's also one, else in Batman, of course, Batman is a, uh, another whole level, and people just don't like him because he's a, he's just a throw off of Avenger Lance League, or well, Green Arrow is probably the most public, a public image, um, perfect characters. But anyways, back to it. <laughs> I, I, I pulled down this character so much. He basically just does Batman things. He goes to this island. Like, of course, he's a castaway. He, go, he goes with his family. His family dies. Um, his sister lives. And... Basically, he serves on this island for years, and he gets rescued, and he's gained so many skills from being on that island. But, of course, unlike the original, he lets the mentality get to him, and he just makes himself basically a multi-death tool. Um, and that's the thing that I do hate about it, is that he wavers between killing people, saving people... And basically, every time someone comes in and out of the show, you gotta be like, so are we killing people, or are we trying to arrest them? And I feel like Arrow every time would be like, the scum of the city don't deserve to live. Or whenever he's in the middle of trying to save people, oh, how dare you think we, we, we are heroes. We're not supposed to kill people. You're supposed to be the best of humanity. That's, like, the, the thing about Arrow. But, of course, it's basically just... He has the death stroke. He met him, and he tries to go abide him. I guess he was a mentor of sorts. Um, and, basically, it's just a jump back and forth between um, him and his mentality of how he should deal with criminals. 
Um, of course, he does end up running into Barry Allen when he wasn't the Flash. And he basically comes in, tries to discover these new metahumans that are coming up. Because his father was arrested for his mother's death. Um, when he knows that there was a metahuman or some kind of freak force in nature that was able to kill his mom and and be out and put him blocks away from his house. Um, and this Barry Allen, I will say, at the beginning, everybody drops out at some point, and I believe I know why for Barry himself. Basically, Barry... He is the ideal Barry. He cares for every human being. He tries his best. He he's basically a Spider Man, but um, he's more he he's he's uh, he's intelligent about things like Spider Man. He's intelligent. The thing is, he throws his teenage slash kid side around a lot more. Where Barry is a full on adult who just he throws some remarks here and there when he has his ego going. Um, but of course. Flash in this one is more about I love the people I care about and I'd rather be able to keep up and do what I need to just keep them alive. And I love the Barry Allen of this one. Um, speaking of which, I know this is a hot topic right now, but Bolt Family will be having, if Grant Gus, the Flash WB series, was to be recast for Ezra Miller, not having him play the role, but his personality, how did it affect the Justice League movie and other titles? That's what I'll do with it. I'm not talking about the Flash movie because I'm sorry, but that situation's a dumpster fire. Um, but that, that, anyways, back to the thing is, I think it's back between him being lovey mushy with Iris West um, and, and then his family dynamic with Joe jumps back and forth. He, Joe was a big character. In recent seasons, he isn't the biggest character. And he actually doesn't... Un, like, the recent thing is they do have reverse flashes. Basically, um, Iris was trying to marry this one guy with the last name Thawne. His great-great-grandson, um, Eobar Thawne was um, supposed to try to be the Flash, but of course, the actual Flash comes in and saves humans um, when he was supposed to, so basically he gets jealous and vows to undo what great good Barry does. And basically that's his life, but the thing is, he's the one who killed his mom. He's the one who trains him because he, he, repl he replicates the skin of the uh, professor, I don't know his name, um, but basically he takes the life of, of uh, the Star Labs um, r owner and uh, he basically acts like he's paralyzed. He, he trains Barry, um, but uh, he basically gets Barry up to speed to where he can actually face Reverse Flash. And of course he's basically making what he hates but he loves the thrill of the hunt he loves the challenge he's basically the joker for the flash um but the most recent episode back to the joe situation is like um they were trying to get rid of reverse flash and joe instead of understanding that this killed his sons um because he he basically adopted barry he killed his son's parents, both of them, one when he was young, so it killed, it took away a lot of his time w with her, and his put his parent, his father in jail, and then once his father got out of jail, he ends him as well. Um, but, um, actually, no, that was Zoom, I think. Never mind. But, anyways, it's just. He's too a big of a threat to be kept alive. And Joe basically says, you've helped, you save him. And if you don't even try to attempt saving him, we are no longer family. And I'm like, so 
you kill people being a cop all the day. Okay, I'm not trying to raise this thing, but it's like, I understand trying to be the hero and try to save everyone you can. But when this guy will go around your back the second you do and kill way more fucking people then in his past he should have been dead and sure it's not any there's no way to do it legally because the once time they try to legally do it and keep him locked up and they put him for execution he freaking he was able to escape it and it's like at this point just freaking kill him that way he doesn't have a chance to come back um and then uh and then it's also the fact that it's just I wouldn't even trust this guy and not to mention at the end of it when he does save reverse flash he says he took his life because he his life was his speed and he takes his speed the way he can survive and it's just DC's that's basically the Flash and Arrow. The only good show is The Legends of Tomorrow, which is basically they find little points in the timeline that have been altered by other beings or um, some random occurrence that wasn't supposed to be of the main timeline. Basically pulling in a Xenoverse, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, and basically, hey, such and such, this right here says that someone has tampered with history. Go back and fix it. Um... Or, you know, try to make it a little bit better. Um, or make it to where it doesn't alter it too much. And that's basically what they are. And it's just cool to see so many things. Like, sure, there's a few events where they bring in villains. Like, they had a reverse flash one time. And it's just, like, it's cool to see multiple other um, characters and other... Like, there's icons like Rasputin. And it's like... That is probably the only show that is together. Um, Supergirl is tries to pull off a Superman show. Like, of course, we have Superman and Lois. Woo! Um, it's basically Supergirl 2.0. Basically, Supergirl tries to be... So after she lands, Superman's already a thing. He's been... He's, he's saved so many lives. He's beat Zod. He's... He's basically put Lex Luthor in jail so many times, but Lex Luthor becomes the main villain, Supergirl. Um, and Superman, I guess, tries to do... A, uh, he tries to make his own life um, outside of the crime fighting, and basically Supergirl takes up the weight. And it's kind of... Legends of Tomorrow is up here. Then Flash... I'd put Supergirl above Arrow because there's a few confusing moments of the entire thing where it's just like, why do you keep introducing this film? Like, I understand people get frustrated with a Flash because basically all they do is um, they do a villain that's faster than Barry and he gets faster to beat them or he gets some kind of gizmo until he's fast enough. Um... Or he has someone who has the ability or technology to um, go against his um, ability, which eventually he'll learn how to get go around it. Like, for example, um, one of the most things is the Royal Flush King, I think he fought. And uh, the, ver the main leader was able to read his mind and then give it to all the rest of the gang. And they were supposed to go, and they were able to, you know, calculate where he would, what he'd do. But of course, when he starts zooming around, he thinks, I have super thinking. I can rewrite my plan so many times before she can read my mind. That way I can beat her. And that's just like, that makes it a little bit better because all it does is introduce new abilities. They have some good, they flesh out the universe. But the thing is, Supergirl, all it is is, Here's the new big bad. Throw in that she that she's able to fight him off eventually, or or you know with the help of this technology like a kryptonite uh, resistant suit. 
Um, but of course she does have the character of Supergirl. She's supposed to live up to her cousin and live up to her promises. And she's also trying to be her own person. But of course, uh, especially the sister arc isn't really the greatest. Um, and the biggest thing is uh, that I didn't like was the, I, I forgot what it is, but like the sister planet to Krypton. Um, like Krypton somehow survives and her and her mother is alive, but uh, but the sister planet to freaking Krypton is alive and her, like they were again like the basically they were the cousins of the Kryptonians like not really but they were like alike and basically the prince or whatever of that ant race um, was supposed to marry Supergirl to kind of make a bond between the two races and uh they hated each other at first eventually they do fall in love but as soon as they they do their own thing um supergirl gets a new guy and then he gets a wife and it's like okay whatever um S superman and lois i wouldn't put above legends of tomorrow but i would put it above flash Basically, it's the superhero Superman we needed. Basically, it's just a Superman trying to be a dad, but he's also got a kid who's growing up with these abilities. And unlike his parents who've just shut him in, he's trying to make it to where he is able to make him understand the abilities. You can use this for these purposes, but these purposes only... Do not use them for selfish purchase purposes, um, but you can use your powers, unlike him, which he had to be keeping them secret until um, he had grown enough and matured enough to use such. Um, and that's basically what Superman and Lois is, um, and basically just him adapting to having his sons. And that's really it for DC um, Arrowverse. Um, let's see here. Um, looks like I only have JoJo's Battle of Tendency, Sonic X, Miraculous Season 4, and The Origin. Uh, well, that's for when Christmas comes around. And then, of course, rewriting Season 4, and then the new rewriting of Telltales. Um, I think I'm probably going to go finish off JoJo Part 2, and then that's kind of it. Um, but anyways, that's it for... I know I generalized it a whole bunch. But thing is, when it comes to these shows... They're just carbon copies every arc, where they ever do it every other arc. So it's just like you know the hero's gonna eventually come back and beat them, and it's like I understand it's a DC slash Marvel story. No matter what, the character comes back in some way and fashion. It might be not the one I loved, but it's the the character will come back. Like uh, for example, if. Tom Holland died. They can always replace an Andrew Garfield, a Toby uh, McGuire. They have Miles Morales sitting on the hot bench. So basically, and not to mention they have a Sony Spider-Man coming out here just to make the Mar the Mar uh, the Spider-Man villains have their own Spider-Man. That's basically what they can do. Like, sure, you don't. It might it, you can always bring back the character like uh, D, uh, WB kills the characters and then brings them back with some bull crap. Like for example, uh, White Canary from Legends of Tomorrow was originally Black Canary, but of course she came back um, eventually and lived. Um, uh, like during like the cro like the big crossover event for uh, um, Infinite Earths, um, Christ on Infinite Earths, um, Green Arrow is killed, but within the next few episodes he gets given the Spectre and then just dies again, and uh, he gets replaced by his daughter. So Green Arrow is still a part of the DC um, Arrowverse. Um, so it's just. That's kind of how it is when it comes to the arrow first. But anyways, I gotta go make part two. Um, and then I want to get some food in me. I actually might watch a movie tonight. I haven't done anything personal for a while now. Um, 
but I need to go put, get part two done, and then um, tomorrow for me, um, we'll be trying to get some more Thief and stuff. I do have Thief part three ready, but like I said, I want to have my own thing, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.